Hello everyone, this is Chelsea with my fourth presentation on the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary. The topics I'll be covering are invasive species and their impacts, lag time, management strategies for lionfish in the Florida Keys, fire regimes, fire and ocean acidification, manatees and the laws of biodiversity, causes of manatee population decline, and protections that are provided for manatees. Starting with invasive species. Invasive species are species that cause harm that are introduced to a new area that is not native to them. Invasive species can be extremely disruptive to ecosystems because they do not fit with the balance of the ecosystem that is native to the area. Many times, invasive species will dominate resource use, which causes native species to suffer. Invasive species can be introduced into an area either on purpose or on accident. An example of an invasive species are lionfish within the Florida Keys. Lionfish are reef fish native to the Indo-Pacific area and Red Sea, and they're an invasive species along the east coast of the United States down to the east coast of South America. Lionfish are very damaging to the ecosystem of the Florida Keys in many different ways. They eat native fish as well as compete with native fish for resources. Lionfish also do not have a lot of predation stress on them, which allows the species to flourish. This causes large ecological consequences because lionfish are causing the depletion of species that play important roles in the natural ecosystem. Lionfish are also very effective in reproducing. When lionfish spawn, they're able to release 12,000 to 15,000 eggs that spread and drift in the water. And lionfish are also able to spawn every four days in warmer water, making population growth very quick in the Florida Keys. Not only are lionfish damaging to ecosystems, they also pose a threat to humans. Lionfish have venomous spines that can harm people who may accidentally step or bump into them while recreating. Because the Florida Keys is a popular vacation destination, the risk of human injury is higher, making it even more important to decrease the population size of lionfish. Lag time can also be seen within the lionfish population. Lag time occurs in the period of time where invasive species are not established enough to spread very much, and this is caused by low numbers in the initial population. So in this map, you can see the changes in lionfish sightings over many different years. Each red dot um, represents a sighting. So in 1985, the first lionfish was sighted off of the coast of Florida, but it was not until 2005 when sightings really increased, and that time between 1985 and 2005 was the lag time. It took 10 years for these sightings to notably increase, but now lionfish are a huge population and they cause a lot of problems. So for some management strategies for dealing with lionfish in the Florida Keys, um, a management strategy that could be used could use eradication and maintenance management, but it would be more difficult to include prevention. It is still unknown how lionfish ended up in the Florida Keys, so it would be hard to prevent immigration of lionfish, but surveying could be a useful prevention tool and keeping track of the prevalence of lionfish and to be able to act if there's an increase in population size. Eradication could include encouraging tourists and fishing groups to catch lionfish and not set a bag limit or size limit on them. And it could also include keeping fishing for lionfish open year-round. Maintenance management could include public education about lionfish as an invasive species and urging the public to report any lionfish sightings. So moving on to fire regimes. A fire regime is the trends in fires in an area based off of the types of fuel burned, special patterns of burns, frequency of burns, and seasonality. Fire shapes the ecology of an area because after a fire, 
species that are more resistant to fire are more likely to survive, which causes those species to be able to occupy a larger area. So fires don't only affect the land that it burns, but it also affects oceans. Vegetation holds onto a lot of carbon, and when this vegetation is burned, that carbon is released. After a fire, vegetation can grow back and recapture this carbon, but if the amount of vegetation growth isn't enough to recapture the carbon, then the amount of carbon in the atmosphere will increase. Increased carbon in the atmosphere leads to ocean acidification. Ocean acidification occurs when carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is dissolved into the ocean, which creates carbonic acid. This causes water to get more acidic. Ocean acidification has a large effect on, coral, on corals and can cause coral bleaching. Ocean acidification can also be directly harmful to organisms um, without damaging their habitat just by simply killing the organism because it's too acidic. So moving on to endangered species. The West Indian manatee is an endangered species that inhabits the Florida Keys. These manatees migrate to the Florida Keys in the winter and some reside year long in the key because of the warm water. Manatees are very slow moving um, large herbivores, and they depend on the seagrass that's found within the Florida Keys. And these manatees really exhibit the first two laws of biodiversity. So the first law is every species has a pre-existing closely allied species. Manatees are closely allied with multiple herbivorous fish species that follow manatees and eat algae off of the manatee, as well as the algae that manatees stir up when they're eating and moving. In this picture, you can see some of those fish, and they just follow the manatee wherever it goes to be able to get that algae. The second law of biodiversity is that most species' ranges are small, and few are large. West Indian manatees have a small range. In this map, you can see the range of these manatees. While this range may seem large because of the length of coast that it goes down, it's important to keep in mind that manatees are shoreline species, so they're only occupying um, area with, that is on the shoreline, so it's a much smaller area of a range. The causes of population decline of, of manatees are habitat loss and collision with boats. The causes of manatee population decline are almost all human-caused. The first cause of population decline is habitat loss. Seagrass is a large part of the manatee's diet, and because seagrass habitat is declining, this decreases the available food for manatees. Seagrass habitat is in decline due to changes in water temperature and acidity, as well as disturbances caused from anchoring. And these disturbances from anchoring occur when anchors are dropped and they can drag along the seabed and rip up the seagrass. Manatees like to live in warm water, which is the main reason that so many manatees migrate to the Keys in the winter. Manatees cannot survive in water temperatures colder than 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Due to increased amounts of storms, as well as cold currents that are flowing through the Keys, water temperature has been decreasing. This is causing many manatees to die because the water gets too cold for them to survive. The second cause of population decline are collisions with boats. Because manatees are so large and slow moving, they are unable to move away from an oncoming boat quick enough to avoid it. And so a lot of manatees collide with boats and it can result in injury or death. And in this picture, you can see a manatee with a lot of scars on its back that have been caused by hitting a boat. A lot of manatees in the Florida Keys have these scars. So lastly, I want to talk about the protections that are provided for manatees. Because the West Indian manatee's status is endangered, there are many protections afforded to them. 
These manatees are also protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. These make it illegal to harass, hunt, capture, or kill manatees. So um, one way to provide protection for manatees that is being employed in the Florida Keys is creating manatee zones, which only allow boats to pass through at a slow speed, which would decrease collisions with manatees. A management strategy associated with manatees are finding a way to address the habitat changes that are due to changes in water temperature and acidity. It's difficult to directly change what temperature currents enter the Florida Keys or how much carbon is input into the atmosphere that turns into carbonic acid because these things are caused globally and so one area cannot um, do very much to change this. So to increase the habitat amenities or to um, lower the amount of habitat loss, uh, there would need to be a decrease in the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, which would be a global effort. So that is all here on my works cited, and thank you.